everybody, Ed and I are in Costa Rica on vacation, and although we're finding a lot of reptiles on this trip, we're finding even more invertebrates, and really cool invertebrates too. So we're going to make a video all about the amazing inverts that we find here on our trip. So I guess we're gonna take you along for our- Inverting? Inverting, we're gonna go inverting. what all we're going to find here near the beach, but we're going to look around and just see what shows up. Some might be a surprise, some might be kind of everywhere like we've been seeing already, but let's go inverting! We just found a Halloween crab. These are in the pet trade where we live, and I was not expecting to see one of these in the wild. But sure enough, I mean, they live in Central America, usually no further than like five miles from the coast, which makes sense that we found one here because the beach is right over there. This is awesome. Now let's see if I can pick him up. You're gonna get pinched. He's a sweetheart. He wouldn't pinch. He's a very polite land crab. Oh, geez, he's fast. No, you can't catch me. No. Get him before he goes in. Okay. I'll just hold him here then. Okay, so this is also called just a land crab technically, and he's pouncing back and forth. There you go, it's okay buddy, you're fine. Uh, I personally prefer the name Halloween crab for them, which is what they're known as in captivity in the pet trade anyway. Oh, dude, no, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> Calm down, you're fine. Oh, he's hiding under your shoe. Okay, well, I won't talk about them very long, but they can grow over a pound when they're an adult. Yeah, so they... four inches on the carapace. Yeah, yep, the carapace, which is their back part here, gets about four inches in diameter. They get huge, and they eat a lot of fruit so they're actually really easy to take care of in captivity can i can i try one more time to hold you oh there you go see we're friends now it's okay he's so cute oh my gosh look at his little face oh my goodness these are adorable and i can see why they are popular as pets but this little guy is a wild land crab in costa rica so i guess we'll let him go don't they also live like a crazy long life oh yeah we, we just looked it up actually they live like 13 years. Bye, little dude. We found another crab. Oh, he loves you though. He doesn't want to go. You don't want to climb Aww. up. You're super cute. Oh, that <laughs> ant has a whole flower. Oh, that one does too. Oh, they're going to make a bouquet. I must bring my girlfriend this beautiful flower and ask for her end in marriage. <laughs> I'm going to bring a leaf. Look, there's two now. Now I have crabs. Oh wait, that came out wrong. You want to explain what you just found? We found a huge moth. Yeah, I don't even know what kind of moth that is. It would freak me out if it flew at me. Yeah, it might not look like a moth though because it just emerged from its cocoon. I don't know where it is, but we found it crawling on the ground. What they have to do is find a tall, safe, secure spot to pump all of the fluids from their abdomen here into the wings to really like have them expand and look like moth wings. You want to put them on this tree over here? Yeah, let's put them on the tree. This is what you're looking for. Oh. You should have put your cocoon or made your cocoon next to a tree, I feel. Well, well, maybe we'll have to check back in on him. In later like, tonight? Yeah, later tonight. We'll see how he's doing. All right, it's been like 40 minutes. Aw, hey, wow. Jerry, you're looking good. Those wings are coming out nice. I still don't know what species of moth this is, like maybe giant silk moth or something. It's got to be a moth because of those antennae look kind of fuzzy. Do I don't... you have a spot? At all? Yeah, we'll have to wait till the wings fully develop before I can identify it, I think. We'll check back on you later, Jerry. My gosh, look at that huge grasshopper. Do you think they bite? Uh, go for it. It's okay, it's come okay. Here, come here, come here. Crawl, crawl into there it. There we go. Yeah, oh, oh he, he does doesn't not... like to be on people's hands. He's not a very well socialized no, grasshopper. he's not. Oh, perfect, yeah. but if he lands on you, we might be all right. Yeah. Wow, that's, oh, that's the biggest grasshopper I've ever seen. Okay, now where's this jumping spider? I think uh, he scared the jumping spider. Aw, oh, Stop jumping. We want to see you and admire come you. Come oh my gosh, you are, he, oh. 
Uh, he's no longer here. Where'd he go? Okay, now that we've finally caught this little guy, big guy, this is a giant red-winged grasshopper. And they are one of the largest species of insects in the world. They get huge. This is an adult, and uh, actually they can grow. He's gonna jump. Don't jump. Don't do it. We don't want to catch you again. They can grow about four to six inches long, making them a pretty good meal for a bird that were to catch them. And so I'm, uh, you're probably happy that I caught you and not a- <laughs> oh, <Jesus>. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, dude. He's like, How you doing? He just kind of did an erratic, you know, figure eight type thing and eventually crashed into Ed. Yeah. That worked out well for us. Great. That I was love awesome. you too, Ben. We were having a moment while we were trying to find a good spot to film. Yeah, yeah. And here he is. So, yeah, like I was saying, they are a huge insect and they're beautiful as adults, but in my opinion, even prettier when they're juveniles. Before they reach their final molt into adulthood, they're black and yellow, and the contrast is just amazing. They look like bumblebees mixed with a grasshopper. These bright colors as juveniles make them look dangerous because, you know, bright colors usually means I'm either venomous or poisonous or I just taste bad, so you should leave me alone. And then as adults, when they have more of this cryptic coloration or more of a camouflage into their backgrounds, they have actually, at this point, developed a different defense mechanism. They have these huge spines on their back legs as adults that they use to kick their predators away with. They're so like, like hi -ya. Yeah, they're like ninja grasshoppers. <laughs> he did kick us when we were trying to pick him up, and it does hurt. Oh, there they are. There's those spines. Wow. That is so cool. I love this, the pattern down his leg, too. Yeah, that's really pretty. All these little spots. Yeah, he's got like a comb crown. Yeah, this reminds me of an iguana. Yeah. Like the spines behind their neck. Didn't something say that there's been hunters who have shot them by mistake because they think they're birds? Yeah, people think they're birds or bats when they're flying around, but they're just a really big bug. They have really pretty red wings as well. Yeah, they really do. They're called the giant red-winged grasshopper because underneath this outer layer of their wings, once it opens up, and I don't know how to make them open it up, but they have bright red under parts of their wing. They are gorgeous in so many ways. I kind of want to put them on my face just to show how big he really is. Go for it. Okay. Look That's at that. how big they are. He's huge. <laughs> All right, Benjamin, here you go. Thanks for being a good sport. Yep. Now go kick some birds. Yeah, there you go. Let's see what else we can find. You do know you have a butterfly on you, right? Yeah, he wants to hurt. Aww. He's joining us on you got, We have a buddy. Yeah, hey buddy. Oh. And now he does want to hurt. Jeffrey, what's up home slice? He's getting there. I'm starting to doubt if it's a moth though, because those don't actually look like fuzzy antenna. I don't know a ton about Costa Rican Lepidoptera identification, but I do know that moths have fuzzy antenna and butterflies have very smooth antenna, usually with a bulb at the end. And moths hold their wings flat against the surface, whereas butterflies hold their wings up and behind their body, like together. So we're gonna have to wait and see, I guess, what you look like in the end, because now you have me confused. And I bet people are watching and they're like, well, obviously it's a this. And and I, I don't know what this is quite yet. So no. we're just gonna give it a little bit more we time. We know snakes. We uh, know snakes. One thing I'm gonna look for is if it is a butterfly and it has big dots near the base of its wing, that would be an owl butterfly. I do know that one. We'll see you later, Johnny. All right, I think we have identified this guy as some sort of hawk moth, but that's as close as we can get. So if anybody knows exactly what species it is, we'd love to hear it in the comments. Now there is another one on this side, so I think we're gonna set him up on a little date here. <laughs> here you go. Jessica, here's your boyfriend. Sammy. Go meet Sammy. Look at them, they're like on a date. Looks like the date's going well. She hasn't left him yet. He is pooping a lot. All right, well, we'll give them some privacy. Yeah. We found a tailless whip scorpion, just like Whoa. in Harry Potter. I didn't know they lived down here. These are also pet invertebrates up where we live. Think I can pick them up? You try. Come here. Oh, he's crawling up my arm. Oh, look at him. That's amazing. Oh, I always think of Harry Potter whenever I see these. Yeah. Awesome. I didn't realize they were from Costa Rica. I had no idea either. We won't cover these a whole lot here, but the first thing you might notice are these long extensions sticking out of his body on either end. And these aren't legs, uh, rather they are kind of like a cat's whiskers in that they help him sense and feel his environment around him, which helps him navigate at night since they are a nocturnal species. So he kind of has one folded up. I think he was feeling me up here a little bit. And then he has the other one off to the side, feeling over in that direction. He's so cute. Well, there we go. A wild tailless whip scorpion. Enjoy your night. We won't use Crucio on you. Oh, look. Oh, 
cool. There's hermit crabs. Wild hermit crabs. Ah, they're so cute. This is one of over, I think about 500 species of hermit crab. Although most of them live in the ocean. We're actually just walking along the beach. You can't see it because it's really dark. But only a few species of hermit crabs actually live on land. And this is one of them. And this is actually one of the types that is a very popular pet actually is the land hermit crab. Unfortunately, most hermit crabs in the pet trade are wild caught because it's very difficult to breed them in captivity. It's only been done a couple of times from what I understand. So if you get a pet hermit crab, chances are you are kind of supporting the wild caught trade. So if you're going to do it, make sure you have an amazing setup for them. And they are kind of particular too, because these little guys breathe using modified gills and those gills need high humidity levels in order to function properly. So that's why you need to maintain a high humidity in their environment. They also really like to move. So yeah. I hear giving them a hamster wheel is good. Yeah. Yeah. They love crawling on hamster wheels. That's right. These guys can live quite a while too. In the wild, I believe it's like seven to 10 years they can live, but in captivity, they can live like 15 to even 20. I think I've even heard of a story of one living to be about 40 years old. So these can be really long lived. They actually have two sets of antenna to help them feel around their environments. There's that central pair. Oh, and the longer ones are coming out on this guy. Please don't pinch me. Thank you. <laughs> and they are omnivores. So they say that a healthy human diet is actually a healthy hermit crab diet. They'll eat meats and vegetables and fruits and just a variety is good for these little guys. They live really close to the shoreline of an ocean because they need shells for their homes. Unlike other species of crabs that actually develop their own or create their own shells, it's part of their body. Hermit crabs need to live in somebody else's shell. Like this is not a part of his body. He just moved his little twisted soft abdomen into it. And as they grow, obviously this means they have to choose larger and larger shells to grow into. So maybe someday little dude, you'll live in this shell. Um, one last thing about them though. If you have a pet hermit crab, don't buy the painted shells. Those often have toxic chemicals in the paint. Instead, just go with the natural shells. Well, that was awesome. We saw so many inverts here in Costa Rica. I think my favorite was the tailless whip scorpion which one was yours yeah mine was either the grasshopper or the halloween crabs it was cool to see them in their like native habitats that was really cool yeah because we see the halloween crabs in the pet trade all the time so to see them in the wild was amazing that was awesome so thank you everybody for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it let us know what your favorite invert from today's video was in the comments below and thank you as always to our wonderful patreon backers and we'll see you next time